All right, guys, this is going to be a review of the new Fitbit Surge in blue. I know this watch has been out for almost a year now, um, but I recently purchased it uh, because I've heard good things about it. And I want to give you my feedback, my honest review of this smartwatch slash, I guess, fitness watch um, from the guys at Fitbit. Uh, super watch, I guess we can call it. Here, check out my likes, my dislikes, all the good, the bad, the ugly about this watch here in this honest review of the Fitbit Surge. All right, so this video is gonna actually be broken down into two parts. First is gonna be the hardware uh, of the watch and then followed by the software of the watch and also the app. The app is a huge part of it um, because the app is sort of how you or sort of interface with the watch. And so uh, we're gonna jump into the hardware here first. I'll get the phone out of the way. Uh, getting in, first of all, this is the blue version. Um, I know they make it in a black, I think originally, and also an orange or tangerine color maybe. Um, I quite like the blue. I think it's pretty, I don't know, sporty, <laughs> but it's different than just a black watch. It actually looks, I think it looks really good with the sort of silver uh, gray ring around the edge, followed by the black uh, internal sort of bezel um, and the sort of titanium silver colors here uh, for the casing as well as the clasp. Um, overall, I think while it's not a sexy, you know, classic looking watch, I do actually really like how it looks. Now, I'm probably not gonna wear this with a suit, probably not gonna wear it with a shirt and tie, um, but for an everyday watch, it's not bad. It's a tad bit on the bulky side. I've got about a seven inch wrist, um, which is fairly tiny for a guy. Uh, and this is the large, and I was right on the border when I ordered it. And so they suggested, Fitbit suggested I order the next size up. And so I'm actually on the second <laughs> to tightest clasp here for me. So um, seven inches is probably right on the edge. I don't know. Um, I might actually end up cutting this down a little bit because it's rubber and just to get rid of some of the excess there. Um, but for me, you know, it's like I said, it's right on the border of what I like in terms of size um, and feel. It's a hair bulky and it's a hair sort of geeky looking, um, you know, sporty. I don't know if you want to call that geeky or not, but it's not a classic watch. I mean, it's not a round face. Um, it doesn't have any hands on it, obviously. Um, you can change the watch faces, which I'll get into in the software, which is cool. You can change it, you know, from a uh, digital to an analog look. And so that's kind of neat. Um, but anyway, we'll jump into the rest of the hardware here. Obviously it has to be bulky because it has a fairly long battery in here. I think you get about five to seven days of normal battery life um, when not using it in GPS mode, but uh, another part of the bulk is the GPS. And so the GPS does add some heft to it um, as well as the heart rate sensor, which will you can see flashing right there. It does give you sort of full-time heart rate monitoring. Um, and so that's gonna add some bulk to this watch. And so by nature, it's gonna be a little bit big. The band is nice and solid, it's rubbery. Um, it doesn't sort of have that like smelly rubber smell to it. It's, it's very sort of um, a benign feel. It doesn't feel tough on the wrist. It doesn't feel abrasive. It feels good, it feels soft. It feels like, you know, a well-designed watch band. I mean, I, I don't even notice it when it's on and when it's, you know, sort of tight on my wrist. It just, it feels good. Um, getting into sort of the other parts of the, of the, uh, the design here, they do, Fitbit does use a proprietary charging plug, so it's not a standard micro USB. It's something that, you know, if you lose the cable or if your dog chews it, you're gonna have a hard time finding another one. You probably have to order it from Fitbit uh, or whatever. You know, if you go traveling, you're not gonna be able to just find one of these at, you know, Radio Shack or Best Buy. It's gonna be, uh, um, you know, you're gonna have to go out of your way to find this plug if you end up losing it or if it gets destroyed. Uh, which is kind of a, de a bummer. Um, otherwise, the, the hardware feels good. The buttons are clicky and responsive. I don't know if you can feel that, um, but uh, that is pretty nice to have, you know, good tactile feedback. It, it also is a touch screen, which is cool. Um, and so, but you don't really have to use the touch screen, which is nice, because if you have gloves on, if you're outside, we're in Alaska here, it was 11 degrees when I went on my run yesterday, um, and I used the buttons to start my run, which is pretty cool. I didn't have to sit there and fumble with the touch screen, take off my gloves and blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty nice. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my sort of gut reaction to the whole thing is that I like it, but I don't know if it's a watch that I can wear every day all the time. You know, I like it for casual use. I like it for general watch uses, <laughs> but I'm not gonna wear this to a special event. I'm not gonna wear it to work if I have to wear a shirt and tie. It just doesn't fit that motif. Um, and that's okay because, you know, this watch isn't for everybody. Um, and so now we'll take a break and we'll get into sort of the software features of the watch and the app. Things about the software that I like, um, everything is, is customizable uh, and I, it's really, really nice to have that. Um, like I said, watch faces can be customizable. Um, I'll get into the app here on the phone 
uh, in a second and show you how to do that, but you can change the watch face. Um, you can also set it up so that, you know, what's your default application? Is your default application the run application or is it something else like yoga or, you know, uh, weightlifting? Um, you can set that as your as your first sort of app so that's quick to get into. Um, you know, and also exercise, all these are customizable, right? You can come in here and then choose which exercise you want to do. Is it yoga? Is it walking? Is it workouts? You know, and you can take, you can add and remove these um, and configure these in arrangements where uh, they're quick and easy to get into. Great, great feature. Simple, super simple, easy to read display here. GPS icon and a heart rate icon telling you what is actually going to be used during that workout. Um, for example, if you have yoga, it's only going to take your heart rate because you're not really moving around a whole lot, at least distance wise in yoga. Uh, so it's pretty pretty easy to understand what's actually going on. Um, really super easy to navigate interface. You know, this main button here is your back button as well as your select button. Um, you have an up and down button here, um, which indicate sort of like selections and backs. Uh, you know, if we want to go, um, for example, here to the timer, we'll go to the timer, we'll click it. You know, obviously you have a setup here to change the amount of time you have. We'll go back uh, and you have a down button here um, for play to start the timer. And it gives you a little buzz indication, uh, which tells you that the timer has started. And if I hit pause, it'll actually um, vibrate again. And uh, that's nice. The watch does not have any beeps to it, which is cool. It doesn't make any noise. <laughs> Everything is silent, but it vibrates. And so you get a nice notification on your wrist um, when the vibration actually happens, which is cool. Uh, other things I like about the software, very, very seamless connection to your phone. Um, the setup was easy out of the box. Fitbit actually gives you a little, a little USB dongle for your laptop or your desktop. You don't even need it. If you have a smartphone with Bluetooth enabled technology, you can set up and configure the, the watch right from the phone, download software updates right from your phone. Um, super, super easy. And also bonus, super easy with Android and with iOS. Awesome, I've been using this watch with both my iPhone and my Android Nexus 5X. It's been working flawlessly with both of them, great. Settings, lots of detailed settings in here you can get into, backlight settings, uh, Bluetooth settings for your music, um, you know, heart rate settings, you know, there are tons, like I said, tons and tons and tons of settings to get in here and configure. Um, while that's probably good for the tech savvy of us, uh, the people that really don't have a lot of tech savvy might find that a little bit intimidating, but you don't really have to customize these unless you want to. So I think you can use the watch as is without sort of getting into all the bells and whistles and dials and buttons and things. Other great parts of the software are you have music control. So if your device is playing music, you can double tap the button here and you can see that you have you will have music control. It's not connected right now. You also have text notifications on the phone or uh, excuse me, on the watch, which is pretty awesome too. And so you can get text and call notifications right on your wrist. You can read what they say. Uh, you can see who's calling. You can't respond obviously or control the call, but you can actually you know see what is actually going on, which is really, really nice. And if you're an Android fan, you can actually choose which default applications those show up from. So if you have if you, like me and you're using Hangouts for your dialer and your phone, you can actually configure the watch to read your Hangouts notifications instead of the built-in messages, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, again, really, really uh, nice software set of features there for the tech savvy of us. Um, we'll jump into the app here now. The app, I'm, I'm very, very pleased to report, works flawlessly with Android. For once, people are finally starting to code uh, apps to work with, with popular hardware that work on Android and on iPhone really well. Um, the app is beautiful. It looks really, really good. It's really easy to navigate. I will, that, I will say, though, that the app on the iPhone is a little bit nicer. It's got a little bit more polish to it than the app on Android, but that's a different video. Um, just getting into the app here, you can look at your exercise uh, from day to day. You can look at your calorie burns from day to day. All these menus are configurable. You can move stuff around. Um, you can then dive into your activity and see what your activity is like over the past few days. You can, you know, it, you can dive so deep into the data that this watch collects for you. And again, it's all done automatically. As long as you have your phone set up to sync with the watch automatically, you can pop the app open and boom, you've got your daily updated stats uh, right there. Again, it'll track your runs, which is really, really cool. And obviously also your bike rides and other things using GPS. It gives you Google Maps information for the actual workout, which is really cool. All the data that you're looking for, your splits, your heart rate, your calories, you know, it's just unreal how much data this, the app and the watch um, collect and can display for you. Uh, 
sleep data as well. You know, you can keep the watch on at night. It actually has that little nice vibration. You can set an alarm to wake you up in the middle or, you know, at a certain time of the day. Really, really cool. It gives you a little breakdown here of how many hours you slept, how often you woke up. Um, I'm super impressed, super impressed. I can't tell you guys how impressed I am with the amount of data that this watch collects and how clean, simple, and beautiful the app is and how wonderful it works. I really, really like it. Um, Again, I talked a little bit about the iPhone Android differences here. Um, you know, I'm showing you this from an Android, obviously. So if you're using an iPhone, it may look a little bit different to you guys, but overall it's about the same. Fitbit did just recently update their software and added the auto detect feature to the watch, which is cool. You basically just leave the watch on. You don't have to press any of the buttons to activate an exercise. You just go and exercise. So example, I went and went for a, a run the other day uh, on Wednesday and boom, it picked up my run automatically. It tracked my heart rate and it sort of gave me a breakdown of my calories. Um, it doesn't give you any GPS data because it's not uh, configured to run on GPS. It's only configured to sort of detect your heart rate uh, and the time of the duration of the activity. So kind of a benefit there, I guess, if you want to save battery life, or I guess if you forget to activate the watch, maybe that'd be a good reason to do it. But overall, you're going to get better data if you set the watch to sort of recognize that you're going to, uh, you know, start an activity and then use the full features of the device there. So here's actually how you go in and uh, change the watch face, which is cool. And you can change a lot of the settings on the device from the app itself. So you're going to actually go inside the app and click on the surge icon and then click on the surge icon again. And then in here is where you can change everything, right? So you can go in, you can choose your clock display, you can choose your alarm settings, right? So if I go in and select clock display, um, I can choose any one of these awesome analog versus digital versus, you know, and it'd be really cool if they open this up to developers to write their own watch faces or at least add more. And hopefully we get that down in the future. Um, there's a little bit of a lag here uh, to actually change the watch face. It kind of takes a minute for the sync to actually happen and the watch kind of pauses for a, maybe a couple seconds. So I won't I won't delay you guys with that, but uh, anyway, really, really cool that you can change all the settings here from the app itself. So it kind of begs the question of what is the Fitbit Surge? Is it a watch? Is it a smartwatch? Is it a fitness tracker? Is it all three? Um, because it does some of those things really well and it does others of those things not so well. Um, but ultimately, I think you have to ask yourself, am I really going to use this? Because in my opinion, um, and again, this is just my opinion, it doesn't fix any problems, okay? So if you think about this in terms of a science experiment or in terms of somebody's master's project, <laughs> which is how I like to think about it, um, it's basically a way to collect a bunch of data but not actually answer any questions or solve any problems. And if we relate that to um, the smartphone, for example, right? The smartphone is so successful because the smartphone solves people's problems. It allows them to get access to information, to answer questions, to collect information, you know, with photos, videos, internet information. Um, it solves people's problems away from their desktop or away from their laptop. So the smartphone fills that gap. It answers those questions. It, it, um, it fixes those problems for people. Smart watches, on the other hand, are still in this weird phase of like providing data, but not actually doing anything with that data. You know, a perfect example is, okay, so I've got all this run data. I've got all these, you know, sleep data parts. I have all this, you know, food data potentially or whatever. And so what? What does that do for me? You know, I'm a fairly fit person. I like to exercise. I'm, I, you know, I've run a marathon. I've, I've run daily, if not, you know, four to five times a day, or excuse me, four to five times a week. Um, and I just find myself struggling with, okay, so I've got these data, but what does it actually mean? There's a very, very large segment of the population that is either out of shape or wants to get in shape. And so they're looking to buy this watch, right? And they're like, this is going to get me motivated to get, get out there and get going. And if that, if that works for you guys, then great. But in my opinion, as a sort of fitness person and technology person, there's a gap, right? The watch provides you with the data, but the data don't fix the problem. The problem is people either eating incorrectly or not working out correctly or not working out enough or just not getting off the couch, right? And so there's this huge gap between the data and the solution. <laughs> and so people are gonna get this watch wear it, use it, and say, all right, great. My heart rate was 160 at my last workout. What does that mean? <laughs> How does that translate into losing weight? How does that help me meet my goals? 
right? And so unless you have a personalized fitness coach or somebody to explain to you what all this data mean, I don't really see the point because you're missing a large part of what's actually going on. And that's, you know, how can I use these data to better improve my sort of workout or better improve my lifestyle, right? And I, while I think it's this watch is fantastic at collecting those data and reporting those data with a beautiful app and with, you know, a great community, um, you know, really, really easy to use features. I think the smartwatch sort of trend is just missing something. It's missing that middle ground where you can go from data to sort of analysis to sort of problem solving. And that's just, again, that's just my opinion of this device. I like it. I just don't think it's a winner. I think that we're still a, either a couple generations or maybe just we're, maybe just it'll never happen because it's missing that sort of human human element that like, you know, people need to understand how to use the data, not just be given the data. And so maybe, um, you know, maybe it's, this watch is more for sports professionals or health and fitness professionals and not just everyday users. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you've sort of understood too what I'm trying to say here at the end. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. But uh, I, again, I really like the watch. I think it's great from a hardware perspective and from a software perspective. I'm just not sold on the idea of fitness watches just yet. So thanks guys. Check out everything else on YouTube and rate, comment, and subscribe.